you know what I can say with the most the utmost certainty? Sad. I can say with the utmost certainty, <laughs> and there's not going to be any point, which is something I was fearful of. I had a serious, you know, heart to heart conversation with myself at one point today. Around like six thirty, I was like, "What are my plans tonight? Mm-hmm. It's Saturday night. <laughs> what are my plans? You know what? I should probably make sure I'm not doing nothing too crazy, so I can make sure I can sit down." Watch Saturday Night Live. They're going to have Gilly hosts. And Shane Gill's the man, the myth, the legend, everybody's favorite comedian. He's going to go on there. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be gonna fantastic. Murder. The guy's going to kill. All right, I'm not sure how he's going to do it. I'm not going to understand <laughs> the way he's going to do it. But the guy's just gonna absolutely going he's gonna, to he's kill, right? Mm. That's what I'm thinking the entire time. And I'm thinking, you know, what's your basic reference for that kind of, you know, assumption? <laughs> Nate Bargatze, right? That, that took me by good. storm. I was like, wait, wait, that guy who I watched that one time on Netflix talk about Common Core, he has, <laughs> he's hosting SNL. You watch it. What is it? It's, it's delicious. It's delectable. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. And it's honestly hilarious because it's on SNL. Like, what is this? This is a hilarious. <laughs> that was the funny part. Like, this is SNL. This is hilarious. So I guess, you know, I thought maybe there was something being churned out right going on behind the scenes. Maybe something, maybe whatever well, screw got pendulum, loose right? back in 2000 and. Whichever screw out loose on 9 11, 2001, <laughs> they never bounced was, back from. They screwed it back tight. They got it back, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, 7 30 came, 8 30 came, 9 30 came, 10 30 came, 11 11 28 came. And I'm thinking, yeah, I don't know. I could watch that. But you know what? They're going to upload the clips anyway. Why would I waste time watching? Because, you know, there's probably going to be a bunch of skits that don't involve Shane that sure. aren't going to be funny. It's probably gonna be a bunch of skits that aren't funny. Probably so I'll just only. wait <laughs> until YouTube posts immediately after when you know SNL their their social media team does what they gotta do and they get the clips and they put the clips up. They go on YouTube. It's two o'clock. I'm like, oh, what's like seven scale? Let me, let me just get a couple of laughs and I can go to sleep. Throw them on. First one. I'm like, this is a cold open. Surely at some point with all these politicians, <laughs> Shane Gill's gonna walk out and talk with the politicians and he'll walk out and he'll be like. He'll do his Trump thing. He'll do his totally accurate, not auto, you know, not no ADR afterwards, making his voice sound better than it actually is. None of that. Isn't it funnier though, not having him do it at all? No. Isn't it funny having those four morons? Well, I, do you know what? Here's something that actually really bothered me. Okay, got under my skin. I watched that stupid opening monologue. First off, I don't recall four guys half-heartedly being. I don't. I don't remember this being the way. They're like, all right, guys, here's, here's how every's gonna stand. Everyone in this skit very lazily is going to say live from New York. It's Saturday night. Yeah, I could have sworn it was one person like Chevy Chase being like live from New York. It's Saturday night. Like it's the coolest thing you're ever going to do. Yeah, and I also kind of thought like maybe the host would do it, but I guess not. And then here's what really you know fucking chased my nipples. Okay, <laughs> here's what really got under my skin is the fact that when I swallowed the bullet, realized that there was no Trump coming out of that part. There's just going to be these four knuckleheads, right, parading and all around. talking about Trump the whole time. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm like, you know what? It makes sense. You know what? I'm, I'm being silly. Of course it's going to be funny. It won't be a waste of my time. How could it ever be? They're just do, they're, 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 they don't want to, you know, they're, they're like, we could give Trump at the beginning, but, you know, then something, it, it's diminishing. Let's, 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 you know, let's make him hungry for it. Of course. I'm like, that's actually, that's fucking genius, man. That's why this place has been an institution for 50 years. <laughs> they know what they're doing over there. They know what they're doing, right? <laughs> After scrolling through the YouTube videos and seeing the Dakota Johnson, uh, they do know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, they, they actually know what they're doing completely. Shane's wardrobe on the monologue didn't have the same effect on me at all. Yeah, he should probably have tried to And it's weird because they both wear the exact same color scheme. Somehow I just didn't, <laughs> something was off about it. Like Shane walked up there and I was like, <laughs> what the hell am I looking at? Dakota Johnson walks up and I'm like, what the hell am I looking at? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the monologue was all right, I guess. I'll give it was fine. All right, it wasn't as funny as like other comedians' monologues have been. It wasn't as funny as when Christian Slater was going trick or treating back in 1996. That, that was funnier, <laughs> but it was an okay monologue. I really thought he was going to do some kind of norm esque thing and call right. him out for stuff. And I thought something. Like, I'm not going to do anything. And honestly, I kind of got a little, kind of got, and I'm even a little angrier because all the comments on that post were all saying like, "Damn, Norm would be proud." And I was in my head, I'm like, I mean, I don't think Norm would be. Listen, he'd probably be like, I mean, it's all right. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, it's fucking fine, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I seem better. That's what I think he would have thought. But apparently, the guy said very confidently, he's very proud. And I can understand that. I mean, like, yeah, you know, maybe, but maybe he would have been proud when he was like, ah, you know, it started off all right, but I kept getting better. But then it didn't. It just, that was the peak of the show, was that okay monologue where he's like, 
Look, there's my mom and my dad and my sister. You know what's funny? I mean, you should have talked about how sister's like a heroin addict. Can you mention that? Yeah, I thought he was going to That would be hilarious. You know, he's talking about how embarrassing his family is. How about you look at him and be like, hey, look, look, his family, they're as dirty as you think they are. They're that a bunch really, of drug addicts. You know, it was a really good punchline when he really got the maximum mileage out of the punchline. When he's like, you know, when you whacked off in front of your. You, 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 know, you know, we all have moms. That was you know, we all jacked off. Funny stuff. You know, better punchline. He's like, my dad is a volunteer high school coach for his girls' <laughs> basketball team. Also, oh, here's, here's, here's actually the, here's the really confusing part. He kept saying, like, no one's laughing. There's so a lot of laughing. I kept hearing laughter. So did he just break the fucking seal that... We never saw that. We actually, he's right. We never. He he kept saying, "I can see everyone's so well lit, no one's laughing." And then it dawned on me, the camera never cut to show us people laughing. Which they usually do. But I heard so many people laughing. Something's not quite adding up here. That fucking jerk off saxophone player laughs at every dumb joke you ever heard, but he didn't laugh once tonight. Which is weird because it was so funny according to that comment section. Everyone said how great it was. That's true. The comments were off the the charts just saying how great it was and how proud Norm would be. And but then again, Norm went up there saying oh, he's not funny either. So I guess that's... Yeah, maybe I, it was I, Norm. I was funny last... I was so funny last year. I was they on had SNL. To fire me. <laughs> but I'm so funny this year. They brought me back. So the, now I can't even... I want to talk about the skits, but I can't even remember the skits because they were just so... I don't even think we finished half of them. So I think I watched about a minute and a half of all of them and then said, you know, I have better things to do. Let's get to the next terrible skit. So just quickly scrolling through them. Uh, the Trump victory party cold open didn't, in fact, have Trump in it. And also, could those four guys be any more boring, just droning on? About the fucking yeah, that's the one thing I understand, too. It's about. like, did the SNL at one point come to the... They're like, listen, guys, we spend all this money and all the years in having a writing department, and it's like, we could... Why spend money... We, we'll just, do, we'll just double the costume department. We get a couple of wigs in there. Yeah, pretty good prosthetics, Some actually. ties, a couple prosthetic nose or two. A bald cat that's falling off, not quite the right skin tone. <laughs> that's pretty funny all in itself. And what if these people like vaguely do some good impressions, kind of a little bit? Really, when you have that going, do you need the joke? Right, because then it's honestly like you just kind of get lost in the sauce for saying like, listen, you think you're just watching like you're actually seeing a sneak peek. That's that's what they're going. For. They're going for immersion over a comedy. Like <laughs> people are gonna be watching this and be like, oh my god, is this actually them talking? Is this, is this really S Tim Scott? Is that actually Marco Rubio? I I thought it was until they said live from New York. Right. When they all said live from fucking, we're uh, uh, live. Uh, live from Idaho. Live, Saturday from, night. live from New York. It's um, it's Tuesday. So, okay. Guess what, Robert? The Idaho part wasn't funny. <laughs> yes, the Tuesday was. part wasn't Dude, funny either. Like, I'm funnier than everybody on this Rock bottom. Right that's now. true. It's not a very high bar. <laughs> all right. Rock bottom Kings. First one we saw, right? Premise idea. All right, kind of funny. I'm like, maybe this is gonna be something. And then other people who weren't Shane talk. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be one of those episodes. They didn't Interesting. Talk at all. Let me go to church on vacation. Had to fast forward a lot of that one. Yeah, that one wasn't funny because it was kind of just like the what was the. It, we get you know what? Here's the problem, okay? I've never gone to church on vacation, so maybe that's maybe because you know what? I, I I can't relate to it. Maybe it just went over my head. Maybe I haven't had enough, you know, real life experience, you know. And that one really funny moment where he's like, hi, guys, I'm 36, but I'm, like, I'm 52. He's like, whoa, Haruto, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you're crazy, man, okay? That's what's I'm, so fucked up about him. He, he makes sketches all the time. He makes sketches. Why can't his sketches be funny, okay? I watched a bunch of them when the boys were here last weekend, okay? It was great. Jake wanted to throw him on. I was under the impression Andrew never saw him. <laughs> on the fifth one of them, Andrew's like, yeah, I've seen him. All right, guys. And I was like, geez. okay, shit. Thanks for ruining the whole atmosphere. Should come back next week. You could watch these awesome SNL skits. <laughs> yeah, really. All right, they recycle the cat. And all those fans are like, you know, when season three of Gillian Key is happening? Who Never. cares? <laughs> you got the spiritual the spiritual successor. You're thinking, whoa, did Alex just flub his lines? Yeah, I did. You know what flubbed his lines in a lot of things he says? Shane Gillis. Then you have a whole week to prepare, bro. Didn't you, not even that. Haven't you had 37 years of stand-up comedy <laughs> experience holding a microphone? He's like, that's the problem. I wasn't holding a microphone. <laughs> That's probably Oh, you're right, because you can't just do <laughs> every five seconds in the middle of it. So the church one, not funny. Everyone's like, who the fuck are you? I'm the one saying it's not funny. That's who it's very simple. <laughs> it's not a lot it's not a lot of it's not a lot of the imagination here. Actually. Okay. I'm the person who went on to YouTube, went to SNL, looked up the Shane Gillis thing with a smile on my face, left with a frown on my face. <laughs> okay? I turned this on for a reason. You know what it was? To laugh. To feel good about myself, to go to bed happy. Instead, <laughs> I'm awake for the goddamn hour talking about how angry I am. <laughs> Rock bottom kings, that was ass. Church on vacation, fuck you. That sucked. <laughs> HR meeting had its moment. 
had its Notice moment. Notice what exactly. I just said there. Exactly. Had its singular, singular fucking moment. What was great about HR meetings, they had one No, what was great line. about it is they proved my point. They said, okay, we, we got comedy legend Shane Gillis. How are we going to utilize him? Well, I thought in the second, I thought in the second sketch, well, here's what we're going to do. First sketch, digital short, normal haircut. Second sketch, new haircut. That's actually really funny. Now it's like Jason Sudeikis and we're the Millers. <laughs> Third haircut. Different in the next sketch. Fourth one. God, go back to Shane's regular hair. Fifth one. Regular hair. Sixth one. Kind of a hair. Kind of a new wig with a mustache combo. Next one. Fugalina. New haircut. Trump sneakers. We'll get to that one. <laughs> My point on the line, this, this show thought the comedy wasn't important. I thought, you know what's important? As long as we have one, two, three, four, five different Shane wigs. Well, like you said, they really upped their um, wardrobe department. It's pathetic, okay? <laughs> HR meeting. What was funny about that sketch? I don't know. There's three attractive women in the sketch. That so, was cool, but it wasn't funny. That was actually pretty cool. Maybe SNL is what they're doing, actually. That was actually pretty cool. That's true, honestly. You look at a lot of the time. A lot of the time, they, they kind of fell at that department. They're like, what if, what if we just have women who aren't funny or attractive? I feel bad for the women, honestly, because you know what? They're watching the show, seeing a bunch of guys who aren't attractive or funny. That's they look true. at Shane Gillis not to be funny. Or attractive. That's in the cards. We're all used to that. <laughs> or we look at Shane and say, okay, good. All right? This is a comfortable, tolerable, acceptable level of ugly, okay? He got a few things going his way in life, right? Supposedly funny. I was under the impression for years. I have a teacher that says he's funny, okay? <laughs> Guess what? Now nah, I got to burn it. All right, got to burn that. And the first three seasons of SNL I owned from when I was eight years old. All right, they're all gone, and it's been bull- ruined for me. And it's bullshit too, because like you said, we went into it knowing he's ugly, so he should have been funny. He should have been funny. Okay, every girl who was forced to watch SNL tonight should have been like, okay, you know what? It's fine. He's ugly, but he's going to be funny. Yeah, and that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. All right, if Shane Gillis was short, I think we, I think I think we would have sacrificed him to the devil tonight. That's how much of <laughs> egregious sin this is. All right, Mister Church on Vacation. They're listening. Honestly, I didn't get that with a fair chance. Is that chance. Even a joke? I don't dude? know. That's my point. Okay? These aren't funny. The floor with Rob Lowe. That wasn't funny either, okay? The novelty of that one guy kind of doing a Rob Lowe impression wore off <laughs> real fast. Yeah. The novelty of the joke. Again, you know what? I'm being an asshole here, okay? Shane came in there with a very, he had a book, okay? It was like fucking that one scene in 8 Mile with Eminem and he's rapping, he's all his, his little, he's got his little, <laughs> his little rap sheet, okay? Shane's fucking writing stuff down, he's writing over his notes, that's how much, that's how many notes he has. He's like, I don't have the paper, I have so many ideas, he just keeps writing over it because he's a goddamn psychopath, which he came up with this shitty fucking set of sketches. Jesus Christ, you know, you hear the uh, Lauren being like, mm, "Shane, you're great. We want to have you back, right?" <laughs> is this what? Is this I, when you know when you heard Shane talk about it over the years, talking about how he's like, you know, they asked me to come on write a pack, and I said, "No, fuck that. That's stupid. And I'm not going to do that." And they said, "Come on, write a pack." And he's like, "No." And they said, "Fine, audition." Did he not write a pack? Is this what his packets look like? Yeah. So what was he going on for originally? Originally, they th- I think they asked him like four different times to come on as a writer. And he's like, fuck that. Yeah, because it's apparently what it looks and like. And then they said, all right, come on as a, just come straight to the, to the main stage and you know, perform for us. Then he got hired. Then he got fired. And then after having five years to stew on it, after making some pretty grandiose promises of how he'd handle his return to SNL, Mm -hmm. okay, chrome to the bone, (laughs) he didn't do it, okay? Instead, he talks about, again, again, I'm not the target demographic, I guess. I was wrong, okay? I've never been to church on vacation, okay? I've never been in an HR meeting like that. (laughs) I've never watched the floor on Fox. Yeah, nor will I. So unfortunately, all these things are really going over my head. All right, the floor on Fox. What was the joke? Him not knowing who black people are? Yeah, I guess he's not trying to see. Shane's like, whoa, Haruto, you're crazy. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. <coughs> and honestly, he shouldn't have that voice. That's a hard voice to do, man. I got to call for him I say it. Yeah, he didn't really do any of his impressions. He didn't do any of his shticks. No, he just very, very noticeably read cue cards, which is getting I've seen him do sketches where he wasn't reading cue cards. That Bob Ice is a vice of Toyota. I thought it was, I, I believed it. <laughs> okay? That could have been posted on a Facebook video, and so I'm just like, damn, we gotta support local businesses. Yeah, no really. one knows what was going on. It felt believable. It was very lived in. All right? I guess he could only play dirty car. You know, that's why, because he was a fucking car salesman before he was a comedian. But it almost feels like they didn't allow him to do any of his Shane Gillis. Well, things. They, allowed him, they allowed him to do uh, the floor. Oh, yeah, okay. He got, to do, he got to do his, apparently he loves that Rob Lowe show, I guess. That show that came out like three months ago. Here's a rule for SNL Make the, don't punch down. Make fun of shows that we all have actually heard of, all right? <laughs> this feels weird. When he's at the floor with Rob Lowe, I laugh saying, that's funny, they're doing a show with Rob Lowe as a... 
Oh my god, Rob Lowe actually hosts a game show. I had that same thought too. I oh my god, that's thing. a thing that exists. That's not. That, so again, the punchline was was that the punchline? And they explained the premise too, and it sounds the whole premise sounds like it's a stupid SNL skit. And also, like, what was this? is that? How that show actually works? I guess the floor burns. It's like lava's on the floor. Or some no. What shit. what was the thing in the? I understand the joke was ha ha ha. White man, no no black person. <laughs> I got the, I got the boiled down. You know, they really ran home with that whole game. They did. That was like eight minutes, and then they switched it around. But then it's like black girl, not no artwork. But then that's the whole person. But what was the vacation? opening part? The guy was like, I can't name milk. What I've the hell was heard that? Of before. I have no idea. This whole that I, just go, is it all, Am I just really that dumb? I, is it all going over my head? You don't get comedy, dude. I've been saying to you for years. You okay, that says there's 37,000 fucking people who watch it. You're telling me right now if I put a gun to their mouths, they're going to explain to me what that joke was? I've always called the paper water myself. I've always had that same problem. Titty milk. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. He said titties on. That's awesome. Yeah, can we actually, before we keep talking about Shane Gillis, can we talk about how nobody in the cast is funny, apparently? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's not even the scariest part. Going, I want to see these, I want to see their fucking names, right? Mm -hmm. I go, all right, and let's, let me see who this rookie is. Been on the cast since 2017, been on the cast since 2019, joined the cast in 2018, going on to their seventh season, this girl's on her fifth season. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, and really, it's how much fucking time Remember, like, two nights ago, we had, like, a brief conversation saying it's kind of crazy to think how it was, like, Adam Sandler, David Spade, Rob Schneider, Mike Myers... Norm, all those guys, and then suddenly it's Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan, a whole new group of also big hitters. Super hot Molly Shannon. Super hot Molly Shannon. Sherry Pretty Terry. hot Sherry O'Terry. That other girl. That one photo where Anna and Geist are kind of looked attractive. Now again, I'll give it credit where credit to this season of SNL. I was like, damn, wait, who's that? Wait, wait, sorry, who's she? Wait, wait, who's that? Yeah. Who are these new hawkers that runs? Oh, they, they've been here for almost an entire They've contract. been there for eight years. Whoa! <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> the next sketch, if you want to call it that, all right, if for those who are listening, they're listening, nice, right? Nice, nice. Now, again, you think of sketch comedy, you think of, all right, you know, you hear like, um, you know, people say, like, how many jokes per minute are in something? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was four <laughs> minutes and five seconds. I want you to all take a, take a moment here. All right, well, I guess four minutes, that's, you know, probably thinking, what, you know, two jokes, you know, some setups, and, you know, I'll see a little bit of time. Let's say, let's say, Four, let's say seven. Let's say seven jokes, right? Not necessarily, not not not, not to a minute, but close. Seven seven jokes, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So four minutes, five seconds. There were zero jokes in the thing, right? You're thinking, whoa, that's a stretching it out pretty thin there. No no jokes at all. None. Well, we can reenact you're it thinking, right wait, now. Are you sure this weren't just jokes like that whole thing earlier with the the titty milk that you just didn't find funny? No no no. There's a con there's a conversation. I say that much. Say one random thing to me that could possibly be an email I got. <sighs> Uh, Adidas slides. Oh damn! We were talking about that. My phone heard, and now my email says that's a coincidence. Slide. That's crazy. Oh shit! Well, my say another random thing. I'm Poland Springs. Person. Huh? Poland Springs water. I'm the other guy at the group. Oh well, now my oh wow! I've been emailing this Poland Springs. Yeah, I don't think this exercise is doing much for the for the. It's actually perfect. That's how fucking dumb the skit was. That was the exact same <laughs> reenact of the skit, dude. Yeah, I'm Arudo. crazy. Arudo, you're crazy, yeah. man. That's, that's nuts. That's the point. That wasn't a skit. We we're just saying things. It's supposed to be sketch comedy. You said I have a gun. You have to reenact it. Now. Whoa. Okay, that's comedy. That's comedy. Okay. Whoa, man. Okay. <laughs> Unless he says I have. He says he has a gun. But he can't show it to me. Michael, okay? do you have a gun? <sighs> yes. I'm not now everyone right knows. Now, okay, now everyone knows it's the office. Nice. You're an asshole, dude. <laughs> no one knew it was the office. I said Michael so quietly. You thought that one slide. Robbie's like, what, what, did you say? What, what were your three punchlines earlier? Idaho. That was hilarious. Tuesday. Live from Idaho is Saturday night. <laughs> that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. Live from Idaho is Tuesday. Tuesday night. You didn't do your own joke the right way. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and then Limu, Emu, and Doug. Honestly, they hilarious. tricked me for about 15 seconds. I'm like, oh my God, they, he, he, can't do, he can't do live. At, that's the problem. He has to be has to be a little uh, digital short. That was gonna be the Gillian Keeves coming and coming. Then full what swing. happens? It's cocaine. The, it's a dirty bird. Shane's kind of freaking out about it a little bit. And why the fuck is the emu doing all the talking in a Shane skit? It's not even like it's Shane's voice. It's the fucking with those subtitles. Because it's comedy, man. I just don't get comedy either. That's no, just that's comedy. Not true. Man. I do get comedy. Idaho is hilarious. That's true. You do get comedy. If there's one thing about you that people, there's one thing people can't say about you, right? All right, they don't have to like you, they don't have to agree with you, but you kill. All right, they don't know how you do it, but you just kill. All right, you just you're an absolute murderer, man. Uh, other two sketch 
sketches, if we're using these terms liberally, right? Two more, just two, just two. How worse could they bet? Fugli- Fugliana. Also, all the skits the entire night. What is this, a 30-minute show? Yeah. Holy shit. About 15 minutes. Plus a, plus a singing act. Plus a singing act, and uh, we can update, which I guess he wasn't a part of. His face wasn't in the thumbnails. Which so. is messed up. And guess what, guys? I'm not I'm not watching that. Okay, you tricked me with the cold open. I thought, <laughs> I guess they're just not showing his face as he walks in at the end. No. I'm not watching Colin Jost talk about how... Actually, no, I, yeah, I'm not watching Colin Jost talk. <laughs> ever. Under any circumstances. Fugliana was a sketch where it made me think like wait so that girl's listen for someone who's so attractive she's doing a good job of making me think otherwise and yeah again it was like kind of funny the maybe the on paper right it's kind of funny and then when it's three minutes and 33 seconds of this girl holding a an expression lots of them like he pointed out very like pulling out magnifying glasses for his tiny penis that's funny that's always that's always a good one that's that's one of those like you know fallback jokes which i was like you know how we felt the runtime tiny penis Shane's like, oh, dude, this is going to hit. This is great. Oh, this is phenomenal. This is incredible. <laughs> if they don't like the other stuff, this is definitely going to be the one that lands. The, the most obnoxious part of the entire thing, without question, has to be Fugliana. This, you know, this this big, you know, I'm assuming it took at least 12 writers to come up with the name alone, let alone the actual premise of the sketch. I'm surprised Shane's actually, guys, honestly, you might have to bring in McKeever's. You know, John McKeever might have to bring in the big guns for this one, because this is pretty highbrow stuff we're working with concept-wise. So after the brain trust, you know, perfects the idea, I'm thinking, what, where is the joke? Because the joke certainly isn't her being like, hi, I want to fuck you. It's like, isn't that funny? No, wouldn't the actual, you know, the, the built-in joke to this be just, you know, having where it goes again, where Shane feels self-conscious, where it's like, she keeps saying shit. Oh, you know, it's fine. The big one's hurt. And he's like, God, shut up. God damn it. Shut up. <laughs> That be, it's not, that's something that we actually lend itself to the premise of the sketch, opposed to being like, she gives blowjobs? Isn't that funny? The sex doll wants to suck his dick. How funny is that? It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. It's, and I can't even... And that one was just stupid. I don't even have like a, a, a thing to say about it where it's like, you know, it would be a lot funnier. You know, it's not really a good representation of... Or this really, this really says a lot about... No, no, nothing. I had nothing to say about it. It was just stupid. It was dumb, okay? The SNL cast sucks. I also The Gump sketch... Started off funny, Shane, hot fucking curly blonde wife, playing a Miami club owner, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Tallahassee, I guess that was the punch. I said, I'm a Tallahassee, I got the big leagues. Oh, whoa. Huh. You're crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> How did you do that voice? It's crazy. <laughs> that's that's, that's the truth. <laughs> so that's, I don't know, they, they all sucked, okay? I, I, that's why I, I said that. I didn't even want to do this, okay? I didn't even want to talk about this because it was so bad, I can't even make fun of it, Okay. Feels like I'm punching down, all right? That's how bad it is. I'm sitting here in New Jersey, all right? I'm going to drive. I'm, he's right on the same goddamn block, all right? <laughs> I can see the finish line, and I'm nowhere goddamn near it. And guess what? what? I think I'm punching down, making fun of him. Yeah, it kind of feels that he way. He got to host SNL. I'm walking around in my basement. <laughs> and he feels like I'm punching down. That's an issue on their end, okay? This should be one of the easiest things to make fun of. This should be like, oh, fuck SNL. It's always just, it's always been for me 20, 20 years. You saw oh, fuck SNL. Okay? Now that you've broken to the point where it's like, oh my God, this is your five year return. This is what we've been, this is what we've been building for years and years and years. Yeah, it makes me kind of feel, I kind of feel bad for the horse. Kind of feel- and also, where did, you can't fucking call, why are you such an asshole to your friend Matt? Have yeah. him walk in. Yeah, dude, fucking, they have people coming all the time on these skits. Okay, you, you, know the ske- you know the sketch, uh, the one with Will Ferrell? Where he uh, ends up taking his girlfriend, the ugly one, Anna Geister, right? He takes her back to his, like, hometown or whatever, or his old stomping yeah, grounds. Yeah, and they yeah. walk into the convenience store, and they're like, hey, jerk off guy. Yeah, you're the porn guy. You're the porn guy, right? And she's like, oh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, I think you're going to be mistaken. Like, no, no, no. You no. come in here, you get a porno, and Three you get a Snickers, Snickers bars, yeah. and you get a, a Code Red. She's like, you do look Code Red and Snickers. He's like... I think you have me mistaken, okay? <laughs> they could have done one little sketch <laughs> like that. Ratio. Hey, it's the porn guy. Uh, no, that's actually not him. We, I, I also was mistaken. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's not him. They could have done the exact same kind of a sketch, something in that ballpark. And just had, just had Matt have one little line. So then the actual fans who were tuning in, they dropped off faster than... Need a show, need a show, need a show. They like collapsed quickly after a bad lead-in. I'm not going to help you on this one. Thanks, buddy. So, <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> that's good, man. That's why we have such a good dynamic. I'm struggling. You're also like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking fucked. I don't know what to tell you. 
Uh, Eat shit and die, <laughs> asshole. And it just, every man for himself. I can't think of a show that ended immediately. I don't know All what right. to tell you, dude. So You're the smart guy. Yeah, I really lost a lot of steam there, huh? Yeah, it's, this is your thing. I'll just, be, I'll, just, I'll just be like, uh, <clears throat> I, thought, I thought that was funny. <laughs> I guess not. That's not funny. I thought it was kind of funny. No one's laughing. No one's laughing. It's bright lights. I can see no one's laughing. I thought it was funny. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I was going to get all the laughs out of that one. <laughs> That's not going to get a big laugh. I thought I was going to get a laugh. Dude, you said one thing. And also, again, maybe they were no one's laughing. Guess what, Shane? Someone, maybe there was a Chinese guy who was, you know, doing the editing, and maybe he has a personal vendetta against you, but he wanted to make it look even dumber than you already seemed. And there was so much, so much laughter going on, I just couldn't understand what you're like, <laughs> Shane, do you know? Get the wax out of your ears. Everyone's uh, laughing. How is that not a skit where like fucking Joe Rogan comes running up because everyone? How to is be there no Joe Rogan SNL. sketch? How is there no? I can't. I'm not. Oh, I can't think of any other idiots in that crew. But how did that people like come like we're storming us? They've SNL. done so many dumb Joe Rogan sketches. They now they're now, now they're pulling back punches. Now his buddies here. They can't. They can't obviously attack. And Joe. again, so does Shane have to host SNL 15 fucking times before Matt McCusker can sniff it the same way with Rogan? Is yeah. the same fucking thing. Have one sketch. And also, you're going to have a sketch where the... Is it, was that the punchline where he made it a remark? Here's her accurate expressions for things I might say in a given situation. When I'm taking my clothes off, like, oh, that's funny. Matt's fat. I'm sorry, Shane's fat. Matt's... I know Matt's a little chunky. <laughs> it's fine. Shane's fat. Ha, ha, ha. Right? Here's my penis. Magnifying... Shane's got a tiny penis. And then they threw in the little, the little Easter egg for all the fans, right? For all the, for all the boys. Mm. They're all like, want to talk about my new idea for a podcast? That was a good one. You know what's hilarious? If instead of showing that asshole who's not, I don't even know his name. It's not Kyle Mooney, but he's the next biggest asshole <laughs> since Kyle Mooney. He's Kyle Mooney adjacent. Okay? Whatever fucking low life, jerk off, pitiful, ugly, sad sack, limp dick fucking loser that that asshole is who played Forrest Gump and played whoever the hell uh, who, who else did he play? You played who, that one who, politician he's never got a sketch, okay? I hate him and I hate him and I hate him, okay? I hate everything about him, okay? I hate his jerk off face, I hate his jerk off name, I hate his jerk off attitude, I hate him, all right? <laughs> Instead of having him play fourth guy, which the punchline is, hey, I'm ugly, and I have an ugly fucking sex doll. Instead of driving that point home again and again and again with this other random jerk-offs who happen to fill out the cast of SNL, how do you say, Lorne, my other friend who kind of follows me around, can he be in this scene? He can be one of those average Joes. That actually would have been really funny if the whole skit was then Joe Rogan was one of the guys and Matt McCusker was one of the guys. Fuck yeah. Well, no, Joe Rogan can't be in it because Joe Rogan has to actively say he's not mainstream while also being the definition of what mainstream is. So that would just be a conflict of interests. You're right. My mistake. And then, uh, so, no, so there's Fugaliniana, which, again, is also, also, you know what? That's also insulting, too, okay? Don't take a girl in one scene and have her be ugly and then have her be in the next sketch hot and then the next guy, she's ugly again, and then she's hot. So now I'm playing, like, well, now I don't know what's going on internally. Cause, like, is she attractive? Is she not attractive? This, this is supposed to be about comedy. It's not supposed to be me having questions about things. Yeah, it's supposed to be funny, not cruel. So, Lee Moo Emu sucks. That's yeah. pretty cruel, pretty shitty. Their listening wasn't even a sketch. At least Lee Moo Emu and Doug, I could understand there was a joke being made. It wasn't a good one, but there's a joke being made. Okay, it wasn't a valiant effort, and it was hardly an effort, but there was an effort in this generalist of terms. In a very roundabout way, there was an effort in that sketch. Okay, you know what there was? Hair and makeup, set design. They probably have someone. Someone probably got. Someone probably makes forty three thousand dollars a year, and pretty much all they did was have to pretty much just call Liberty Bibbity and be like, "Is this? Can we do this?" And they're like, "Yeah, that's, that sounds hilarious." Does it mean emu who talks? Oh my god. All of his skits are at least four minutes. That one's two minutes, and the first minute's just the Limu Emu commercial. Yeah. They said the opening of that fucking thing Pretty verbatim. Funny. Whoa, Rudo, you're crazy. <laughs> so, uh, Trump victory party didn't have him. Rock bottom kings, not funny. Very low brow. Church on a vacation, couldn't relate to. HR meeting, had that one funny moment. And also, like again, it was you know they were like, um, can I pocket this? And I was like, that's kind of funny. And then they said like, so I can't pocket this? And then they said, yeah. no. He's like, so I can't pocket it. It's like, okay, so you guys are getting a lot of legwork out of Shane Gillis saying pocket. <laughs> I didn't find that funny, but I guess that was what you guys were like. It's going to be one of those catchphrases, you know? She keeps saying over and over again. Oh, yeah, Shane Gillis. He's the, the pocket this guy. He's that pocket, guy. pocket this guy. He's the one like, whoa, you're crazy. <laughs> the floor, again, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's kind of funny that's a TV show that exists. I think it's hilarious, but not enough to make fun of it for four minutes and 36 seconds being the longest of all the sketches he did. And they never showed us the floor gimmick of it. 
They might have. No, they didn't because we fat. Yeah, they, they, they just didn't. They just had that. They, yeah, they, no, they didn't really have anything at all. Idea. Uh, Gump, I had to turn it off because you know what's stupid? Forrest Gump, he was dumber. Sketches about Forrest Gump, he was even dumber than that. Sketches about Forrest Gump 47 years later. And it was even dumber than that, a skit that has no business being about Forrest Gump. Having Forrest Gump come in as a cameo character who's all about him. Well, you remember how there was that uh, big dumb dumb who owned a nightclub in Tallahassee, used to bully him? Mm -hmm. This is like the follow-up to that. Oh. Yeah. I hope Robert Zemeckis sues them. (laughs) That's what I'm pulling for. It's only Saturday, you know, Sunday morning, there could be something in the New Yorker saying something. Full-page ad. (laughs) Saying, yeah, this Kyle Mooney asshole needs to be stopped. And then Kyle Mooney's like, that's not me. And Bob Zemeckis is like, I know it's not you, but essentially, you know, ipso facto, it's 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 you. What's his name? Kyle Mooney, you said? That guy? I have no idea no, who that guy's name is. is Kyle, Kyle Mooney. Mooney. Rob Zemeckis is like, you're Kyle Mooney adjacent. Yeah, exactly. You're Kyle, I heard that in this really cool podcast. Oh, was it Matt and Shane's? No. No, way better one. No, this is actually uh, not stupid. <laughs> Oh, wow, Bob, you're really articulate. Well, <laughs> you're really articulate, Bob. So that sucked. Gump was honestly so offensive, I couldn't even watch the whole thing. Their listening was so offensive, and the fact that there was nothing. There. Again, at least the Gump thing, it was like, I guess that's kind of funny. It's like they forgot there's supposed to be fucking jokes in these skits. It's not just supposed to be a situation you watch people. It's supposed to be a situational comedy. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be something funny going on. Well, Where's you know, the funny? You know, it's what's so funny about it. The funny part is that Shane, right, is from Philly. Mm-hmm. He's an Eagles fan. They had him wearing a Green Bay Packers oh. t-shirt. Why, first off, he shouldn't even be willing to I know. Do that. Ben Affleck's a real man, all right? Ben Affleck, almost quit Gone Girl, is going to wear a Yankees cap? Fuck you. Being a Yankees fan myself, I have more respect for Ben Affleck now Dude, than prior to that. I, exactly. Ben Affleck, okay? Ben, and also, guess what, Shane, okay? Ben Affleck is to keep a little bit of dignity because he doesn't wear a fucking other team shirt. And then he gets to go do a shitty Dunkin' Donuts commercial in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to make fun of him too much for it. You, on the other hand, you get to go on podcasts wearing Buffalo Bills hats because what? Because you and Gabe Davis are friends. That's stupid. You're gonna go on SNL wearing a. Pa- You're gonna go on SNL and wear a Packers shirt, dude. We don't even, Doesn't know even who make you sense. Are. First off, put him in a fucking like a Giants shirt or a Jets shirt or something that may. This is Saturday Night Live. This isn't fucking taking place at your joke earlier. We're not in Idaho. We're not in Green Bay, Wisconsin. This is fucking <laughs> stupid. Okay, and more important than that, don't wear any other fucking colors. Yeah, for real, dude. Have some self respect. <sighs> And then the worst of all of it, unfortunately, is the fact that after all those sketches that weren't funny, right? Gump, they're listening, Limu, Emu, and Doug, The Floor, HR, meaning Church on Vacation, Trump list, Trump Victory Party, Trump and smart. Rock Bottom Kings. What the hit is with, besides Fugliana, which again, could have been really funny. Did you know what is funny? The sketch, they were clearly parodying of Bill Hader yeah, being that doll. That's great. Fugliana. They should have just had Bill Hader come and be Fugliana. And that honestly, too, fucking. When, Start fucking the doll. I saw, do something weird, okay? Yeah, you say it's a sex doll. It's, it's a sex doll. What? I don't know what the whole point is. Is like you're talking to it. Aren't you fucking it? <laughs> Have the jokes be like, yeah, you know, her pussy's really shallow, but it's what a girl like this would expect. She can't have a prime pussy. And you can't say pussy. Fine. Say fucking, you know, cunt. Oh. I don't know. That works better, say, yeah. T- say, say fucking meat fuck hole, okay? <laughs> That's what Shane likes. That's what, she, like, Shane's like, yeah, I want to put my cock in this hole. Sometimes, you know, even though my dick's super tiny, funny guys, right? She has a magnifying glass because it's great, too. Let's, 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 let's uh, you know, take a step back here, right? Look at the objectively what the actual storyline of the sketch was. He made a remark earlier in the sketch saying, uh, my confidence was having issues, so I had to get a, an uglier doll. Mm. And this doll tells me that his dick is small. I like how they took the joke and stayed consistent with it. So I thought, shouldn't this girl, be, at the very least, instead of pulling the magnifying glass, shouldn't the other girl have been like, the big ones hurt? And they see, <laughs> she says things like that that make you feel better. The other one was really mean. The hot one was really mean. Yeah, that would show that would, that would show some confidence. But instead they thought, well, she's already making so many funny faces. People are going to be dying on the couch. They're not going to hear the people talking. They're not going to hear the jokes. They're going to be like, funny face, funny face, funny face. And then that one girl trying to jack him off. That was hilarious. That was funny. That was Because guess what? That guy likes being jacked off. That's what's so funny about it. So that's Fugliana, right? You're thinking, how do they top that one? What could they possibly do, right? They've already used Shane to... They've already taken the Shane rag and just completely got every last drip of it turning it, okay? <laughs> really showing the best version of Shane that could possibly They're do. thinking, all right, you know, we got to give the audience what they want. They got to have at least one Trump impression to prove, just to prove the fact that that one he did on Netflix was not enhanced <laughs> digitally, that he, in fact, can do a Trump impression perfectly. 
I guess that's the cop out. They're like, all right, Shane, cat's out of the bag. Everyone knows that your Trump impression can't possibly be as good as it was in that, <laughs> you know, beautiful dogs. So instead, what we're going to do is this very simple. We're going to have you playing a character who's being inspired by Trump. So it doesn't actually have to be a good Trump impression. And on top of that, did. we're going to have someone else walk out doing a horrible Trump impression. So everyone's like, oh, no, I guess Shane's is that good. It's actually really smart. It's, it's what we call in, ter- in baseball terms bunting. <laughs> I know you came out here after a five-year, you know, being blue ball thing. And like, I'm going to have a fucking grand slam. You can put some gravy on that turkey tater. <laughs> Instead, you bunted it. Okay. Trump sneakers. Could have been hilarious, okay? I don't even think they touched the fact that those shoes are like $10 billion. They're just like, no. That's a real thing? Yeah. I had no idea. I thought that was, I thought that was an original idea. No, nah, that would require... Uh, Thinking? Yeah, I was going to say, like a, you know, a, a, a somewhat of a hive mind. <laughs> it did give us the only, only, only funny joke of the entire night. From the writers of Like Mike. That was the only good joke. Yeah, exactly. The fact that they're actually doing a Like Mike joke. That was the only good part of it. And the fact that they got to, at the very least, since I watched that skit last, it reminded me that the girl playing Fugly on it was actually is attractive. Actually, and I wasn't attractive. wrong. Yeah. And I guess that was kind of funny, right? Like, ha, 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 Trump tricked everyone into thinking he's actually good in bed. It's like, Actually, um, I'm the greatest basketball player there is. See, I sounded just like Shane. I'm so good at my impression. I think you should just send that in for your tape, honestly. Right. They set the bar really low with these knuckleheads they got cast, so. I appreciate that. And again, it's also, it's like, <sighs> the joke, so... The shoes make you kind of a dick. It would have been funny if he actually got good at basketball and did the Trump voice. And also, why would I he mean, just been better at things? Yeah, I. He got it's not like Trump. Trump won once. He became the president. Yeah, so he <laughs> could he made one shot of basketball. Could he make, couldn't couldn't he got like one shot and then miss a second shot? And then they have uh, you know the best part of the whole entire sketch for the final coup de gras of the entire evening. The part where they got like, oh my god, Shane's gonna do his Trump impression. Shane's gonna do his Trump impression, right? Mm-hmm. After that happens, SNL's like, we don't want to confuse anyone watching this thinking we're actually in support of Trump. So before it's over, we're gonna cut to just one little bit of a, one little just to remind everyone, Biden twenty twenty four, and they have uh, Kyle Mooney and Jason come on there, and I guess they ran out of the makeup department at this part because all the different wigs and shit for Shane. So this guy just. Was him doing? <laughs> I didn't know what he was trying to do till he said. Dude, till he said, "I'm Joe Biden," and then he fell down. And it's like again, it's hilarious, guys. Joe Biden falls down, punching down a little bit here. Yeah, that's the lowest hanging fruit you could possibly have to make fun of him. Yeah, it's almost like if you had Shane come on and just make jokes about how he's like, "I'm ugly." Oh, yeah, that's what you guys did. It's like, oh my, yeah. Guess what? Guess what, guys? I know that. That's- I have eyes that work. Okay. That's- that's- when Dakota Johnson came on. I don't think she was just talking about how hot she is the whole time. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I mean, I don't my only pro- I'm not going to watch it. I'll have no idea. No, my only proof is that when they had Mara Robbie come on that one time, the whole joke was she's ugly because she's actually hot. That would have been the better joke. Why wasn't Shane doing Chippendales dances? Being sexy. Showing us how fucking shapely and figurely he is. How pristine his figure truly is. Instead, what would we get? Uh, Trump, Trump sneakers, sneakers. Fugliana, Limu, Emu, and Doug. They're listening. Gump, the floor, HR meeting, church on vacation, rock bottom kings, and the Trumpless victory cold open. Seen better. <laughs>